which happened, right? Because because think of it this way, right? Uh, the the dawn of agriculture, obviously, is when we started to understand that we could settle somewhere, right? And we can make farms and we can start domesticating animals and stuff like that, right? And with that comes a lot of problems, right? The idea that oh, will my grain grow next year? How how successful will the fact that my grain come? Will the springs be okay? Will my animals be okay? I mean, I mean, that's why if you go back into like Genesis, for example, uh, within the first few chapters, uh, they always talk about the um, the de promise of devotion to uh, higher powers in return for you know uh, mastery over plants and animals. Right? The idea is is it spawns back to agriculture, um, so animism. Right? The idea that. You know, if we give souls to the things like plants and animals that and we worship a certain God, we will get favor in return. So religion's always been a very selfish thing um, to humans because we've always thought that in order for something good to happen, we have to we have to give something to get something. And that's human. Yeah. That's a human nature. Exactly. To do that, right. Exactly. And and. Um, and that's why when you look at religions back in the day, they were always animal and plant based. They were they were they were around the idea that, hey, how can we guarantee that next year we will have a good harvest? Right. And that's animism. Right. And then anim animism slowly started to disappear. And then polynism came in, you know, the idols and stuff where humans started to realize, like, hey, if we start devoting our attention to certain aspects of our lives and worshiping those aspects, um, we may get better things like fertility, like the idea of worshiping a fertility God. Oh, will, will my wife get pregnant if we have sex, right? Well, if, if we do that, maybe us giving something out to a, a God of fertility may allow us to have a better pregnancy, right? Uh, again, the sacrifices to like war gods, they used to sacrifice cattle. They used to, it was always animals. It was always animals. Unless you're thinking about the Mayans where they did also do human sacrifices and stuff. But the idea here is like people forget that the rise of religion is almost correlated to the rise of agriculture. And the actual belief of a Z, like a God, a true God actually started like 1300 years before Christ, like Egyptians. They actually are the ones that they believed in many, many gods at one point, like the different, the different gods of Cern, Ra and stuff like that. Um, but it was actually the Egyptians that I think it was the God of Aten or something. I can't remember his name, but the idea there is, is one of the pharaohs gave him true power over all of universe right um and that's where it, it sort of starts to become a uh, and then obviously christianity came and islam came but people forget that religion for most of earth's like human humanity has been a very isolated thing every single civilization had their own laws their own beliefs their own ways that harvests would come and i just find it interesting that people never go beyond the book that they have in front of them because they think that's where it started well that's not where it started it started yeah. a whole nine thousand years before um but yeah that was just thought i would add that into the conversation <laughs> yeah agriculture is where everything started i mean 100%. another thing about agriculture is where I mean, we, we used to look at the plants and think that we had a sense of control right we had a sense of control of how how to harvest mm -hmm. them when they would you yes. know harvest it so this is gives us the notion that there's control over us. There's somebody out there that's more powerful than us yeah, that, is, that has 100%. control over us. And it's 100%. the same thing. It's, so that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think one of, uh, the, one of the reasons why we as a species are so good at that, there was a study done, I think, in 2017, where they showed that apes um, uh, in, in the wild with hidden cameras, they started to uh, get rocks and throw it against a tree and then place the rocks next to the tree. And all these apes in their tribe, I don't know what they call them, their tribe of, what, what do you call them? A pack of apes. Is it a pack? I don't know, whatever. Um, but but they started to do this around the tree. And they so they obviously gave this tree some sort of importance. They never, they, 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 they would smack it with a rock and put the rock next to the tree. And all of the apes did that in the wild, right? So we know that animals have a sense of ritualism. They, they can have that... Um, putting yeah. giving something to get to get back right and even um, even some monkeys have this they understand death they understand when some member of their species mm. dies and they actually yep. cry about it they have rituals about it they put a grave yep. for it this is where it comes from people exactly. it's part of our nature exactly i mean if you if you look at macaques right those they're the weirdest monkeys like they have some really weird shit right but but in their in their packs right what you see is they actually have rules. They have morals, rules and morals, where, for example, if if a one macaque, and now this, is, this isn't all species, this is certain species of macaques, again, proof that certain species of sapiens, of, of homos, had certain ways of evolving, right? Uh, where uh, the, the leader of, of, the, of the packs, 
if they see that some of the younger adults are going out of line and 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 sleeping i say sleeping exactly sleeping with other chosen ma male and female macaques um they get kicked out of the clan because their behavior was not right they weren't allowed to do that so there's even a sense of morality in animals in that in that regard and all these things can be stemmed back to the fact that hey we had these common ancestors and we only did better because we chose to walk on two legs and suffered as a consequence i mean there's a reason why women give we give birth to premature babies no other animal on this earth gives birth to premature babies like we do right that is because we chose to walk on two legs and women's birth canals got smaller and smaller as a consequence right um but one of the benefits of that is our cranial capacity became bigger and bigger and bigger because we were able to grow and evolve as a species and do more things, right? And the cranial capacity is directly related to our brain power and our intelligence. So when people say, oh, well, why don't tigers and frogs, where's their religion? Or where is the squirrel's religion? Why don't they believe in a God, right? It's because they physically didn't go down the path of suffering on two legs and increasing their cranial capacity to have a more intelligent brain. Right. That there's there's even theory to say that if Neanderthals managed to stay alive because their cranial capacity was at least 30 percent greater than ours and ours is ours is big. Right. But imagine how smart Neanderthals could have been if they managed to obviously survive. But obviously we outdid them because of our agility, our thumbs and all that sort of stuff. But, wow. you know, it just it's just one of those things that if Neanderthals were still here today, they may be even more complex, even wow. more Oh, on, in, in, on wow. their game than us yeah yeah they had bigger brains than we did um just we ended up killing them because we were more agile and you know our thumbs moved and we could throw spears and arrows and shit <laughs> yeah another thing that made us human is the fact that because we walked in virtue of that we were mm -hmm. able to we had to navigate to new conditions new environments and that forced us to really understand how to cultivate the land there how to find resources of water and how to understand the weather patterns there 100%. better so we, 100%. so it's like a, it's like this, uh, what's it called? A, a feedback, a positive feedback of knowledge and, and understanding and brain growth. And that's what, that's what made us human. I mean, the walk out of Africa is really what made us human. Um, mm -hmm. The migration that we did. And, um, but yeah, I didn't know that Neanderthals had bigger brains than us. That's crazy. Yeah, they had they had a larger cranial capacity than, than we did. But obviously, um, we just were too good in it. We were homo, homo sapiens. We were like, you know what? Nah, man. It's good. The, big guy, the big guy doesn't always win. <laughs> it's all, yeah, but it's also not just about their brain size because elephants have bigger brain capacities too. It's it's the it's the, the folding. It's the folding of the brain that makes it part of the but, but, but also the ratio, right? The ratio is, in, in fact, probably more important, right? Because, for example, our brains make up around two and two. two they, I think it's two to three percent of our overall weight of our body, but it, they take twenty five percent of the resources. Look at look at an elephant. Yeah. An elephant probably weighs like a hundred times more than I do. So even though their brain's bigger, their brains don't consume as much energy as my brain does because we've managed to have a higher ratio of brain to energy ratio compared to most other animals, right? Which is Obviously, again, fueled by our agriculture, more food means more nutrients, means better, better nutrition, better brain growth. Better brain growth means to more thinking, more intelligence, more complexity that right. lead to religions getting. And that's why religions get more complex over the years. Right. Because our brains got more intelligent and we could make more things happen and more, be more creative with our thinking. Right. And it's not just uh, meat, by the way, that made our brains grow. It's also cooked vegetables and cooked other mm -hmm. and, and cooked uh, plant based foods. Yeah. Cooking in general makes our makes your more calorie dense meals. And that's what really I don't know if that really fueled our brains to grow necessarily. But I think having more access to calories allowed us to do other things that made our brains that stimulated oh, our brains to like thinking and philosophy and, and arts and that really I agreed. And, and what you were what you're saying is quite important because one, the, 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 mo the moment that we were able to start cooking food meant it lasted longer, which means we could venture out further and find more resources to get better. Because obviously at one point when we couldn't cook or we didn't realize that cooking meat, for example, made it last 10 times longer because we could travel with it. Right. We had to be very settled. We were very dumb. We were very isolated in our communities. As soon as you can start cooking food and, and as soon as you realize salt, for example, is a great way to make meat last longer and food preserved, et cetera, uh, we could then venture out further, find new resources, find new communities. And then, you know, that's that was essentially globalization back in the day. The, mo the moment we could start cooking food was the first globalization because then we could go out and trade or swap things and share things and, you know, just migrate further than a mile away from our well, village at the time.
Yeah, for sure. There's so many complexities to our to our history. It's amazing, actually. If people just understood half a fraction of what our history did, they they would be they would realize that religion's nonsense. It's it's actually scary and embarrassing how many people don't understand basic science. Um, and, and I think the moment and the moment people um, the the moment people let's say not not admit but they realize the complexity and the depth of what humanity has in religion because let's be honest they're, they're they're symbiotic right religion had to exist with the complexities of humans developing from the agricultural age because that's all we knew right that's all we knew i mean you can say it could have gone another way but it didn't it went this way it went the idea that hey if i want my plants to get better or i want harvest to get better or my, my lambs to get nice and meaty and stuff and I physically don't know what, imagine they had pesticides back then. Imagine they knew exactly how to yeah. make their crops grow, crop rotations, right? Imagine they did that, yeah? They wouldn't have to believe in a God because they knew exactly what to do to make sure that their wheat was grown every year. But guess what? They didn't. So they had to rely on faith, on, on blind luck. Like, oh, I hope it gets better. And what's the best way to do that? It's to believe in something. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand religion has a part and I, I never say, I've never said that religion inherently is bad. Yeah, yeah, what I agree. What I say is that religion, um, it can be toxic, right? Especially Christianity and Islam. But uh, I, yeah, I think the religion has its place even today. Even today, I think mm -hmm. religion has its place. I mean, look at Marvel. Uh, look at Marvel. Look at all the movies we go to. We dress, we dress up in the costumes. For those two hours that we're in the movie theater, we pretend as if it's real. We, we pretend it's really happening. We get yeah. emotional. We, we, we like off. to do that, right? It's very religious for us. Marvel is a religion for us. So that's Wait. perfectly fine. As long as you come out of the theater knowing that it's not real. It's just a movie. Just like, and, and that's how we should think about it.